entertained. Star de stars delivered big games. But we're still mad, huh? Because Kawhi Leonard missed his second game in a week and the first game of a back-to-back -back due to load management. But before you get on your soapbox about load management, the NBA made an, made an official statement from spokesman Mike Bass. He said Kawhi Leonard is not a healthy player under the league's resting policy and as such is listed as managing a knee injury in the LA Clippers injury report. The league office in consultation with the NBA's director of sports medicine is comfortable with the team's medical staff's determination that Leonard is not sufficiently healthy to play in back-to-back -back games at this time. So we have Dominique still with us. Jay Williams comes and joins the show. Yes, we yes, are yes. so excited. And now, my sister. My Stanford Niger sister. My Stanford sister, my <laughs> Nigerian right. sister, one of the top players in the WNBA, and my girl, Chinea Gwumake, is with us as well here. I appreciate here. it. How much? Oh, yeah. hey, <laughs> my dog, Jay Will. Thank you. I see Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. I get it. <laughs> no, but you know what? I'll start. I'll, I'll give you some love, Jays. We'll start with you. Like, how do you feel about the NBA's load management policy? I think load management is getting blown out of proportion. I really do, because it only pertains to Kawhi. This is not an NBA problem. This is a Kawhi Leonard problem for a guy who's already been in the league. He's been doing it for a long time. Popovich has been doing it. He did it with Toronto last year. I didn't hear Toronto Raptor fans complain when they won the world championship. And it's looking to be the same thing with Clippers today. And also, I, I bring back into this, how do we measure success? When we talk about who the greatest of all times are, we talk about how many championships have you won? That's where we go. We don't talk about how many regular season titles are, how many regular season awards do you have? That's not a big thing. So I understand where fans get to this point where they say, I pay my money, I want to see you play. But if you're really a fan of a team, you're not as worried about a game on a back-to-back -back night where your player, your best player, guy who's been in the league for a while, misses a game. You're more focused on how do we win a championship. But, but it's not just about the fans on your team. And I understand this. I'm a player guy normally, and I consider, I understand why they're doing this, and it is the best interest of the players on this team. It's the best interest of their fan, best interest of the organization. But the NBA and all sports, like, we forget that it is an entertainment product first. Like, there are interests and concerns, like, your main motivation is to win championship. But the other motivation is to make money. And this impacts the way that you make money. If you are not showing up for nationally televised games, if you aren't consistently showing up for games for uh, non-nationally televised games, the value of your product goes down. Your value of your product goes down, that impacts basketball-related revenue, which impacts the money that are going to the other guys. So I could care less, frankly, about the fans, other than the fact that they are not just fans, they are customers. But and they deserve the product that they're going to buy. But Dominique, we're talking about a specific player that is not necessarily the most entertaining player in the NBA. What did we talk about before? He's the quote, like we made a joke about it. Fun guy, Kawhi Leonard, right? right? Um, but as you mentioned, Jay, he's been doing load management for a grand portion of his career. Like he's only played more than uh, 70 games, two out of the last eight seasons. He's been doing it in San Antonio. When he was finals MVP in San Antonio, how many games did he play in the regular season? He right. played 66 exactly. games. Mm. So he's been doing this. I understand. Did it in Toronto and won a championship by doing it. But about a year ago, you know, I got to do the mic. About a year ago, about a year ago. We, villain, <laughs> we, we made him a villain for how he handled his situation leaving San Antonio. Now he's the hero. He has all the attention. People think he's the most dominant player. Yes, we want to see him. But so, the Clippers, they knew what they were signing up for when they got and, Kawhi Leonard. And I don't think that Clippers fans are bothered by this. And I think that the argument for load management is not necessarily that it'll help you win a championship. Because what I'm talking about is not winning a championship. It's creating a, a great entertainment product that will continue to make money. But the argument for load management is that you extend someone's career yeah. and he can continue to play going forward. But no matter how boring you think Kawhi is, he's a name that casual fans know and a name that guys, that people will tune in to watch. If Kawhi Leonard is not playing, there's a reason that people will tune out, which is, it matters when it talks about selling, when we're talking about selling this product. You know where else that this load management will hurt Kawhi as well? It hurts in the end season voting, right? When you're deciding, does he yeah. make a first team or a second team? I don't know who here votes, but I know when I voted and I'm close between people and I see Kawhi only played 50 or 60 games, I'm kind of like, well, that edges this guy in. So now, what does first, that say about the regular season, though? Does it matter? First, you big time us by saying that you got to vote. You think you better? I, I, I didn't know who had a vote at the table. <laughs> second, second, <laughs> second of all, Jay, Jay oh, voted. excuse me, got <laughs> votes. <laughs> that's two as opposed what to one. Out, what what <laughs> we so special, we got votes. But second of all, I don't think Kawhi cares. And that's yeah. the question. Well, I was going to say three things. 
I don't think he does care. Right. Nobody knows what Kawhi cares about other than winning the championship. <laughs> okay, fair point. Number two, the NBA isn't going to be losing on revenue. Exactly. It's they guaranteed will. money. No, but they have to sell it again. They, they are. To, they're going to sell it again, and the price is higher. Dominic, the price Dominic, is higher. Dominic, you're yes, telling me you're, you're talking about one player in the league. Thank no, you. We're no. talking no. about you got to be in this. You got to be in this. Who is this one player that has made a brand by signing with New Balance and being the not most entertaining guy in the league? Who else is low manager pertain to? You guys are being disingenuous when you say we're not talking we're talking we're using Le- or you're using Kawhi as a peg here not because he's the only or because he's the one right now not because he's the only one he may be the only one so far this season but through the past several years we've talked about load management as a thing that happens in this league and whether you want to accept who? it LeBron uh, James I mean Le- LeBron James a- AD who's in your AD who's in your seven that's fine he's that's fine a- AD set out well I guess that wasn't load management but he missed nope. a bunch of games but the fact of the matter is we know that load management works and it's a thing that happens so I'm not arguing against it as an effective thing I'm just saying that all benefits Benefits have a cost, and you can pretend if you want to that that does not impact the value. I guarantee you, as someone who's negotiated CBAs mm-hmm. and said in these rooms, I guarantee you when you're negotiating with these TV partners and you're saying, I want X billions of dollars, they're going to discount the fact that some of well, these games, I, your best I, players well, are that, not going to show the hell up. I'm in a CBA negotiation with the NBA, Ooh, so I yeah, understand we speak how about I see you. I see you. This is one player, and I think that when you get into these situations, um, they understand that one player moves the needle, but right. that has just happened with Kawhi Leonard. And the thing is, he's already had the conversations. The Clippers front office has had the conversations with the NBA to manage this. They're not surprised by this. They accept it. Now, if it becomes a trend, then then it's an issue, right? With other players. But it's only Kawhi. And the only reason we care about Kawhi is because he forced us to care about winning a championship. I think Kawhi is fine. I'm not arguing that Kawhi should have played. Like, Kawhi had a mysterious quad injury that none of us have really figured out. He had knee injuries. Like, I understand that. But the fact of the matter is the perception is out there. The perception is out there that all your stars aren't going to play on nationally televised games. And that matters because the competition for people's attention and where you can put ad space is aggressive. But one thing that that's going to hurt is that Jay? perception Jay? is also reality when it comes to injuries. I don't think the NBA is going to lose revenue on ad sales when it comes to this. You know why? What's the last bastion that we have right now on linear TV? Live sports. But I think that's... And by, no, just let me finish for a okay, second. Go ahead. I think when you have Amazon, when you have Apple, when you have Netflix, when you have all these other entities that are going to start bidding for these services of live sports, I think the value is only going to go up. And I, my second point, my second point <laughs> is that when we talk about load management as it pertains to Kawhi Leonard or LeBron James, we're also talking about pre-existing injuries. Exactly. We're also talking about guys who have been in the league for 10 plus years. So, so that's going to be somewhat of an issue if you're trying to get so your team to the finish line. First, you guys keep, has an you keep just bringing to play, up... I'm just sorry, to go play ahead. devil's advocate here, Jay to your point, is it possible, too, though, that any, especially when you've been playing a while, anyone can kind of have a nagging injury that right. the team can play up Agreed. as, a, re, as so, a load management issue? Fair point, right? So I would say this. Then the NBA needs to find a way to redo their CBA and make it, hey, right. players have to play. If you play, that's guaranteed money. If you do not play, we're not guaranteed to pay. Oh, don't oh, mess with that money. Oh, play game? <laughs> so, I mean, if, if I you think really want to fix the, cause, the crux of the problem, one thing, then all of a sudden you're being paid upon. If you play 55 games, your salary is based, me, based upon how many games you played that let game. Me, let me address your issues in reverse order. So the first thing, you keep, <laughs> you keep arguing with me as if I disagree with the value of load management. I understand why okay. you do it. I understand why it works. You don't have to convince me of that. But I disagree with your, your understanding. I think your understanding of who the NBA's con- – competition is, I think that's flawed. The idea that we're only competing, or it's professional sports only competing with other linear TV, doesn't matter. Like, we are competing with Fortnite. You're competing with Netflix. You're competing with movies. You're competing with every entertainment product out there. And in order to make money, you need to get beyond hardcore fans that's going to watch anyway. You need to attract people that don't know anybody except for the three big name guys. If your three big name guys show up, that matters. That gets people to turn off their video games. That keeps people to stay in the house. That raises ad sales, and that's what you're money forgetting is from. in order to show up, you have to be healthy and available. Okay, that's now, fine. I'm an athlete that has dealt with a right knee microfracture surgery, a left Achilles surgery. And as much as you want to Kawhi out there, when he's out there, what has he done so far this year? Dominic he leads is. the NBA in fourth quarter points. Right. 13 points per game you get from the fourth quarter. You've already seen games where the Clippers, they're losing. They're down 14 um, when they play the Jazz without Kawhi. What happens when they shoot the ball and they have him? He goes off and they still win the game. That's what they're – like. It Finally. all starts with Kawhi's availability. And Finally. how do you manage his availability? He has a history of injuries. Right. And you so, cannot discount the so, fact that because load management is a cute, sexy term you use right mm-hmm. now to cover the injuries and in the, in the dialogue we're having today, those injuries could be real. Again, I say right. I've had injuries. I will never be 100% right. when I step on the floor. But when I'm there, I'm not the best of my 95%. So, and that's what they're trying to – it's just Kawhi. Finally. Just I've been Kawhi. waiting for you guys to get to this point because that is the only argument I think for it is that – 
you want your stars out there. You don't just want them out there. You want them out there at and their best. And when he's out there, he so, delivers. So I agree. I think that you can argue that if we have him for fewer games, it's better, and it also prolongs their, their career, and that makes the product more entertaining. But you can't argue against the fact that right now, low management is a, is a thing that's going on. It's a perceived thing, and it impacts the way that the customers, frankly, being the TV partners and the fans, it impacts the way the customers view the sport, and that matters. As much as I hate and that that matters, why you bring it, it matters. you bring it to the CBA negotiations, that's oh. why we're discussing possibly dropping Agreed. the number of NBA games to 73 or 74. I love that. And I, that just wonder, I just wonder how many games will Kawhi need to play for fans to feel like he, he is giving his all. They got their money's yeah. right. worth. He has to play in every game. There's, there's no right it. answer to that. Because, like, right? Right. There, there's no right answer to that. It's subjective. But there's no right answer because I think the core to most of this, frankly, is like – Fan jealousy, like it comes to the way it all. It always comes down to you make so much money. Why don't you get yourself out there and play a child's game? Like they don't understand what it means to be a professional athlete, and no matter what they do, it's gonna. They're gonna fans are gonna find a way to be annoyed with how much load they are they're taking on. I just feel like cause no my dad gave me this example the other day because we were talking about it. He was like, you know, so I had 16 sick days left at work. <laughs> at the end of the year, I was like, you know what? I got a week vacation. I'm gonna add on my sick days. I didn't hear people come to him and say, hey, you owe it to your organization. Right. To not be, if you're not sick, you got to go to work. Yeah. Like, so people do it every day. Yeah. I'm not saying that pertains I mean, to Kawhi. I'm just saying how you take advantage of it. Exactly. I don't know what I your like daddy do, that, but uh, <laughs> it, it ain't Kawhi level uh, uh, contributions. I'm just guessing. I mean, every, every job is, is important. Yes. But, you know, you brought up something that I'm hearing in discussions a lot more. And, Chanae, I want to hear your thoughts on it. You brought up the idea of being paid per, per game. game. Oh, don't do what that. What would you think about that? I want my guarantee money. I don't <laughs> want to pay yeah. the game. That's not I what we're you. talking about in our CBA <laughs> discussions. But I do think if this is a persistent issue where more players are getting affected, um, we're sitting out. Because we've talked about um, Kawhi and load management now. But LeBron James took about, what, two weeks, missed eight games back when he was had his first season in Cleveland. And do you guys remember how there were signs, people were crying, saying, oh, I came all the way from China to see, like, right. this This matters. So if it is an issue to the league, right. as other people have alluded to, including Doris Burke, then right. maybe you do make it a guarantee, but I would never say that I'm on the this side. Is, look, I mean, this, is a re this is a result of the NBA being a player-driven league. And, like, coming from my – my life in the NFL, there are lots of starting quarterbacks who are sitting out now because their team are out of contention, and nobody cares. Because, frankly, the, the value to the NFL proposition is a lot different than it is for the NBA proposition. So if you are going to be players who are front and center and take more control of the league, you also have to take the backlash for it. And the backlash for it is there's a lot more pressure on NBA players than there is for, frankly, just about anybody except for, like, three. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, best quarterback, most exciting player, hasn't played in a few weeks. And no, I mean, nobody's really crying over how it's impacting the product because it's not the same as LeBron James or Kawhi Leonard or those real Anthony Davis. The big yep. name NBA yep. players move the needle so much more than any player in any other sport. I'm all for players getting their guaranteed money. Oh, Trust yeah, don't me. take I'm that I'm all money. for that away. I'm just saying as a way to combat that is if you do go per game basis on payment, but then you do run into the issue of, yeah. say, if you're – your team, yes, right? You say the team exactly. doctor then says he is healthy to go. The one thing that we do know, I've known this as yeah. a player, I'm healthy to go, but something doesn't feel right. They work for mm -hmm. the team. And if something doesn't feel right, how do you, how do you subjectively come so, to that conclusion that you're not healthy to so play? So let me, let me can, I say, can I say one thing? Because I feel like guilty almost that we put this pay per play thing on the table. Because I don't think you should limit Why those guys. in football? No, I mean, it, it doesn't actually. But anyway, either way, I think it's unfair to put it on the table because we are already, we're only talking about the stars for who this matters for. Yep. But we already have instituted a max cap on their salaries. We've already shorted them the money that they are worth. I mean, LeBron James, Kevin Durant are worth so much more than they are getting paid. And I think it's fair for us to also ask that if we are going to force their salaries down, they can take a little load management time. Like, you're not going to force their salaries down using a, a max salary cap and then say, also, you can't get all of this money that's less than you deserve until you play all the I'm games. I'm just trying to help you find a conclusion for oh, your I, argument. I, that's what I'm trying to do. That's I don't even believe in what you're saying. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you find a conclusion for your own. I'm so, no, 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 no. See, you misunderstand. <laughs> this is the problem. No, 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 no. The, this is, actually the, is real. The problem is how that do you there's, fix a, it? there's a misunderstanding. Don't tell me what the problem is. I know no, what the no, problem no, no. is, Dominic. You are, how do you fix it? You are misunderstanding. So there was a time when I was a leader in the NBA union and a leader in an NFL union. Be a leader right now. Tell me how you fix it. And that time was when it was my job to fix problems. Right now, it's not your Right now, okay then. Right now, right now, I'm a dummy on TV. My job is to be entertaining and also present these problems. You're better than this, Donald. Shanae, Shanae, <laughs> she doing do CBA negotiations. I got to do a little bit of both. You go fix the problems. I'm just going to bring them up, make y'all laugh, make you smile, make you smarter. That's my job. So what you're saying is that you don't have a real answer. No. I mean, if, if I was dedicated <laughs> my... Was, if I was dedicated...
dedicating my life to preparing and fixing that. I would fix it. Games with star that ain't my job. I just want to see the world yeah. burn. Come to the con come to the table with conclusions. <laughs> All right, we appreciate everybody's passion on the subject. Um, guess what? Coming up, we have Hawks point guard Ice Trey, Trey Young. Go. Ice Trey coming on the show. And he's going to be talking about how he's grown from his rookie season to now, and if the Hawks will make the playoffs. Oh, that's a great nickname. Ice, Ice Trey. Make Ice Trey. It's the East. It's open.